Hey everybody, here's a little quiz for you. What do these three renderings have in common? And you have to pause now if you want more time to answer it, because the answer is that it is the lighting, or at least the technique used to light these scenes. They are all three lit by a combination of an HDRI and an area light. So the HDRI are used for the ambient lighting and the uh, area light is used to create the uh, key lighting and the sharp shadows that you see. Let's jump straight into the scene and see how to recreate it. I have the scene here containing of the three buttons and a ground plane with a paper material on it. You can see it here in the geometry view as well, how everything is set up. And in the environment at the moment, we just have the standard uh, startup environment. From here, I create a new environment. I go to the HDRI editor and I go down to uh, select the background here and go down to color or gradient. And I think in this case, I select gradient, keep it black at the bottom here. And then for the top, I want to make a very saturated dark blue. So we get this very nice, uh, maybe not that saturated, maybe less purple-ish. So we get this nice blue tint to the entire scene. Hit OK. And for now, that's it for the um, HDRI. We might have to go back in and adjust it once we have the area light in, but let's move on for now. So to add in an area light, I need a piece of geometry to add it to. So I go to Edit, Add Geometry, and select Plane. So because this scene is uh, in millimeters, we can see that uh, if we select one of the objects here that we have millimeters, this plane comes in with the size of one by one millimeter. So we have to scale it up quite a bit. So I tick my scale checkbox here and move this up in size. So we at least can see it for now. Hit OK here and then here in the ge geometry view, I right click it and select move selection so I can move it over here. Oops, that was the ground plane. So let me make sure that this plane is selected. Right click in the geometry view and select move selection. Here we go. So what I want to do is to rotate it and move it a bit away from my image here. Before I move on, I double click on the plane and change the material type to area light, like so. Then I go in and change the color to something with a bit of a yellow tint. And you can do it by using this Kelvin scale by selecting this color mode drop down and select Kelvin and go for something just very subtle yellow or you can of course pick your own color as well like this if you want to. I think this should be good for now and we can see right now that it's way too bright so I will take it down quite a bit. Um, so this scene is pretty small so we have to go quite small as well with the uh, value of the uh, light intensity so let's try and do 50 as a start. In this shot, I want the shadows to move to the left as a part of the composition. So to move this plane here, I make sure again that it is selected, right click and select move selection. So I could move it like this and then rotate it, but I find it a bit easier to work with the, um, whoops, so now it starts lacking and sometimes it does that when you have an image style applied. So let me just go back to my default one while uh, adjusting the scene here. So what I want to do is to pick one of these as the pivot point for my lighting. So here in the move tool, I select pick and then I can go ahead and click on the part I want to center around and hit OK. So now I can rotate my area light like this and you can see how the shadows move around as well. Pretty fun stuff. So I like a position around here. And so you can see right now that the shadow, shadows are moving in quite different directions. And I want them to a bit be a bit more aligned. And to do that, you have to move your light source further away. And now they become longer. But to make up for that, I can take this lighting up higher as well. So I move it a bit to the side here because I want it to be visible a bit here on this side. So maybe I find that the shadows are too soft and to make up for that, you adjust the size of your area light. I will 
To do that, reset this pivot position. So we are back at our plane here and I will make sure the scale is visible and then I will take it and move it down like that. And you will see right away, or at least once you let it rest up a bit, that the shadows have become more sharp. I think I will move it down just a bit again to make them a bit longer. And let me make it a bit bigger as well. So there's a lot of back and forth here. And because I moved it further away, it's also a bit too faint at the moment. So let me do it, make it a bit brighter. 150 perhaps. Cool, so that looks quite good. In the scene, we have these metal parts and they look a bit dull at the moment. And we could go ahead and add in an, another area light to uh, reflect in these parts. But I find that for uh, adding in just a bit of reflection uh, without ruining in the uh, overall look of the lighting, uh, it's a bit easier to add in a pin because we have this uh, set highlight function. So let me go ahead and do that. I select add pin and the set highlight is automatically activated. So I can go ahead and click here and I want the light to reflect here. So first of all, it's way too bright. We can see how it lits, lights up the entire scene. So I will take the brightness down, maybe add some fall off to the edge so we don't have any sharp reflections like that. And then perhaps take the brightness down even further. All right, so you will see that it adds a bit to the general lighting. Uh, but not too much while making sure these parts look a bit more shiny like they are. So once I'm happy, let me go back and apply my image style for a bit more contrast and a bit of bloom as well. One important thing I want to stress here is that this blue ambient lighting makes the shadows look more blue as well as they often do in real life because we have the blue sky giving an ambient uh, illumination to our scene. So having our shadows looking a bit blue will make things look a bit more realistic than if it were just a, a gray color, for example. Then we will get this um, yellow tint, of course, from the area light, but our shadows will look gray. It is, of course, a stylistic choice, but it's one that I like a lot and have been doing a lot lately. So that's how you do it. I hope that you learned something from it and that you can use it in your future rendering work. If you found this helpful, please hit the like button so more people can find it and subscribe if you haven't done already to see more stuff like this in the future. Until next time, take care.